We are going to take a look at the Kawasaki Prairie 300. And I'm going to go through, I'm going to do an overview of this machine, give some pros and cons, some things we like, some things we don't like. And then I'm going to go through and do a service on this four-wheeler just to show you what we need to do there as far as a complete full service, spark plugs, oil filter, air filter, stuff like that. So we'll go through it. Now at this time, I'll kind of walk through both of these at the same time and uh, actually make two separate videos so that you don't have to watch a full 20 minutes if all you're wanting to do is change your engine oil. So make sure you check my channel to catch both these videos here. I'm just gonna go through it at this time. On the left hand side here, you can see this four wheeler has had some abuse. It's missing a couple parts here. I'll try to point those out. I wanna uh, show you the way that it looks from the factory, so I'll post a picture up uh, at some point during this video of how it's supposed to look. Uh, this this here, first thing we're missing is the recoil pull starter rope. So we've got the actual re recoil housing here. We just got the rope and the handle that's missing out of there. Nice to have that option just in case that battery is dead or is low, just not working to turn that machine over. You can uh, use that pull starter. It is a bit of a challenge. Make sure you grab a hold. Uh, got a tight grip on there before you go and pull that recoil pull starter. Also on this left hand side, we've got a handful of different things on this side, kind of a lot going on, but we've got our idle adjust here. This goes straight to the carburetor. You wanna make sure that your four wheeler is good and warmed up before you go and do this, uh, but you wanna turn it small increments at a time. I suggest maybe a half turn, possibly a quarter turn after your four wheeler is completely warmed up. You don't wanna do it until then. Otherwise your four wheeler is gonna warm up and then you're gonna have issues after that. So also on this left hand side here, right beside your idle adjust is your choke lever here or your choke knob. Pull that, your four wheeler will be choked and you only wanna do that for a couple minutes before you um, go out and take it down the road, do whatever you're gonna do. You wanna make sure that that choke is off, otherwise you're just gonna be loading that four wheeler up with fuel and um, gonna be running way too rich. Uh, right along the same side here is your oil lines. I'll show you your oil cooler up front, but you've got oil lines running back here, and uh, that's going to transfer oil from your oil cooler to your current case, run through your oil filter. So also on this side is your carburetor. You can get to your carburetor here. I'm going to do a separate video on cleaning that carburetor and rebuilding it. Also check out my channel. I've got a, a video on... Uh, the comparison between an unbranded carburetor and an OEM carburetor. Just want to point out a couple differences between the two. Or check that video out. I'll put a link below. Over right here is your fuel petcock here. You've got three different options, reserve, off, and on. Reserve is just uh, the last little bit of that fuel that you have in your tank there. That's just kind of for emergencies. I like to keep it in the on position. That way if you are uh, got a distance before you get back to fuel, you've got a little bit of fuel still in that tank. Turn it to the off position if you're ever doing any kind of carb work, if you're trailering your four-wheeler or putting it in the shop for storage for a while, you wanna make sure you wanna shut that fuel off so you're not dumping fuel out and I'll explain that more in a carburetor video. Behind here is your fuel petcock here. So this is your knob here. Behind here is your fuel petcock here. Yeah, it is a fuel valve that just shuts that fuel on off. Uh, sometimes those are not connected exactly to the tank. I believe this one is. Uh, it's a little bit hard to see with that fuel tank cover on there. So to service your four-wheeler now to uh, change your engine oil, uh, you want to pull this cover off here. You've got a Phillips screw up here, which we've already removed. Then you can just lift this cover off of here. One thing to note quick, this tells you how much oil you need to use, 2.8 liters, and that's close to two, uh, close to three quarts, so make sure you grab three quarts when you're getting ready to change your oil. Before you go to change your oil, what I like to do is start the four-wheeler, let it run for a couple minutes, maybe four or five minutes, get that oil warmed up. Uh, it helps it flow a little bit better, also kind of collects any kind of metal shavings and kind of puts them into the oil, that way when you drain your oil, that uh, those particles will come out with your oil. Down below here, once you've got your four-wheeler warmed up, get it, grab a drain pan. Underneath here is your uh, oil drain plug here. It's a 17 millimeter bolt right in the center of your four-wheeler right there. And just drain that, uh, that oil will start flowing. Then you can come up here, remove these four Phillips screws here and pull this black cover off. Underneath there is your engine 
oil filter. Problem with having the engine oil filter on the side of your motor here like this, and you don't have a skid plate that you can remove on this model, unfortunately. So what ends up happening is you got oil that's just gonna kinda drain everywhere. Uh, unless you take carbon choke cleaner, some kind of an engine cleaner, you're, you're gonna have oil residue building up here, collecting dust on, on this side here, which is unfortunate, um, but that's just how they made this four-wheeler. Once you get the new engine oil filter installed, install the drain plug on that engine oil uh, drain down below there, then you can go ahead and fill your oil up. Like I said, it's 2.8 quarts, so I like to put about two and a half in. I'll put the, the fill plug back in. I'll run the four-wheeler for a minute or two, shut it off, at that point, check it and see where we're at for oil level. Put that cover on, make sure that uh, you tighten these down fairly well, and then you've got your uh, bolt up here that you're gonna wanna tighten up as well. Moving along to the front side here, uh, we've got, uh, this is a four-wheel drive model. They also make a two-wheel. So on this one, you're gonna have drive shafts in the front, also your front differential, and I'm gonna go through servicing those as well. Uh, but to find your VIN number on this machine, you can see here we've got a broken axle and that's something that we're going to go through and, and redo on this one. But your VIN number on this machine is going to be right here, your left hand side in between your AR mounts, your lower AR mounts here is going to be your VIN number. So 17 digits long, check the 10th digit, that'll tell you the year. This one is an X model, so that's going to be a, a 1999. Y is going to be a 2000. So and I can get you those numbers and letters here uh, in the link in the in the comments below, uh, just so you have those, so you know which year it is. Front bumper is here. It mounts up in looks like six different places. Twelve millimeter bolts holding that on, so it's going to be uh, solid. It's going to mount directly to the frame. Uh, just a great uh, bumper system on this machine. Not big enough, in my opinion. Um, if you're working with livestock or or anything there's a lot of plastic that's exposed here so don't like that part of it but it is it does mount well up to the frame right here is your front differential like i said uh to drain that we've got a 10 millimeter bolt on the side here also don't like this setup uh because you got a 10 millimeter bolt here but then what that what that's going to do is drain directly onto this skid plate here which you cannot remove so you've got, you've got differential oil just sitting in your skid plate here. Again, got to take and wash that off. Otherwise, you're just going to have uh, oil residue and dirt just building up all over the place. Let that, in, that differential oil drain. And then you want to go over uh, directly a little bit above. I don't find a good spot for you to see it there, but is a cap here. And you pull this cap. This is going to be your the fill plug for the differential. It's also going to be the, the level so your the level of differential fluid should be to the bottom of this cap here. So if you're just checking your differential oil, pull this cap, make sure you've got oil in there, make sure you can touch it with your finger. Or if that differential oil starts coming out, uh, then you know you've got plenty of oil in there. This is an oil cooled model, so different than the 400s. Where the 400s are gonna be um, liquid cooled. This is oil cooled. So you've got an oil cooler right here. Same thing as a radiator on the liquid cooled machines. You do want to make sure that this is cleaned out. Make sure the fins aren't destroyed and beat up and bent. Make sure there's no holes in that. Also inspect your lines. Make sure there's no leaks uh, because engine oil will drain out of there and you will get your four wheeler too hot um, if that oil comes out of there. We've got our headlight assemblies up top here. You can see this has been, this front end's been uh, beat up on this machine. We're missing a headlight here. We're also missing the rack on the front. So we're gonna go ahead and we'll have to replace those as well. You've got your drive shafts here, and I showed you on the other side, we're missing the drive shaft. It's actually broke. Um, you wanna inspect these boots, make sure there's no holes, make sure there's no uh, grease coming out of there. If there is, you wanna make sure you replace those immediately. If you don't, you'll be replacing that drive shaft. You can replace a boot for $15. You can replace a drive shaft for $185. Check my video. I've done a comparison to the unbranded aftermarket drive shafts compared to the OEM drive shafts and some high quality aftermarket ones. So make sure you check that video out. That's crucial that you put a good axle on your machine. Otherwise, you're going to have a an axle that um, you know you saved fifty dollars on, but you're going to have to replace your differential. Anyways, check that video out. 
uh, it's important to do that before you go buy some cheap drive shafts for your machine. We've got disc brakes on the front here. We've got a caliper on either side and disc on either side. You wanna inspect those. I like to inspect them anytime I service the four-wheeler uh, after the four-wheeler is several years old because at that point, you, your brake pads could be getting uh, down there. You don't want metal to metal on those uh, discs. You'll destroy discs, you'll destroy calipers. You just wanna make sure that those pads are good. You've got your shocks right here on either side. These are not adjustable shocks, so sometimes they've got uh, points down here where you can adjust these shocks. That is not the case on this four-wheeler. Um, you can get aftermarket shocks to beef those up a little bit if that's what you need, but these uh, stock ones are not uh, adjustable. On your right-hand side here is where your, uh, your belt and your clutches sit underneath this cover here and I've done separate videos on removing the the clutches or and rebuilding the clutches as well as replacing that belt so that's the cover that they're under here you've got eight millimeter bolts all the way around this cover uh, make sure you check those videos out if you're needing to get underneath that cover a couple tips on doing that uh, and a couple tips on getting that cover off and how how you remove those clutches since this is an automatic, we've got our gear shifter on this side. You'll see here the order. It goes low, high, neutral, reverse. And it also says on there, if your tag is worn out, I'll give, a, I'll give you a, a zoom there. That way you can see what it says. You've actually got to push the button in, which is this button here on the shifter, to shift it into these positions. So if you are in neutral, you don't need any button at all to go to high. If you're going to go to low then you do have to push the button same thing when reverse if you're in neutral you need to push the button to go into reverse so keep that in mind if you're not able to shift it maybe your push button isn't working correctly or maybe you're just not pushing the button uh, you will have to do that to go into those different gears ignition switch on your right hand side here right above your gear shifter we've got your foot brake down here on your right side and that goes directly to the rear that's cable operated there's the cable there i'll show you the adjustment in the rear uh, but you want to make sure that that foot brake is working properly we've got 10 inch rims on the rear so they're a little bit smaller rim size in diameter than the front the front is a 12 inch so keep that in mind when you go to order tires you're going to need 10s for the rear 12s for the front this is a custom trailer hitch i would not suggest doing something like this on your four-wheeler that is uh, looks dangerous you're going to end up destroying your rear end which is the case on this one so behind your uh your right wheel is your drum brakes for the rear you've got two adjustments here i'll show you uh the cable that goes up to the handlebars in just a second but you've got uh this cable here which is on the right it goes to your foot brake that we just went over. You want to make sure that that's adjusted properly. Then you've got your cable that is on the left here that runs up to your hand brakes. You want to make sure both of those are adjusted properly. You can do that by these butterfly nuts. You don't want these putting tension on this arm here. If you're doing that, if your brakes are always engaged, you'll wear those brake shoes out quickly. So you want to make sure that uh, there's a little bit of slack in these. Make sure you can wiggle them back and forth a little bit. That way, if you've got your foot slightly resting on your brake pedal you're not sitting there engaging those brakes uh, while you're going down the road in the back here we've got a rear storage box and that storage box obviously has been destroyed but it's back there typically you've got two straps that'll hold that lid on there and uh, it's not it's supposed to be um it's supposed to be waterproof so you've got a, a gasket in here you want to make sure and inspect that gasket make sure it's good before you go through dr driving through a river We've got your seat latch on to the left of your toolbox here, your storage box. Go ahead and pull that uh, that knob there, and that'll release your seat. I'll show you that when we get up to the top there, but there is your seat release there. Changing your rear differential fluid on this machine. Um, similar to the front, you've got your your fill plug here as well as your uh, your level plug. So that'll tell you you just got to be able to see that fluid in there or or make sure that that fluid is to the bottom of this fill plug here. Down below here, when you're draining this oil, you've got a skid plate, and there's, uh, I believe, three 12 millimeter bolts that you'll remove before you can get to the actual drain plug on this differential. Uh, you won't be able to get to that drain plug without pulling this skid. 
So go, go ahead then underneath there should be a 10 millimeter nut or excuse me, underneath here should be a 10 millimeter nut that will drain that fluid. Uh, as soon as that fluid's done draining it, you can uh, install that drain plug, take your oil, your differential oil and fill it up to the bottom of this fill plug here and then install your fill plug. And that's uh, how much oil needs to be in there. Your rear sh on the front and rear differentials on these machines, uh, you can use the same oil. You can use just about any 80 weight, 90 differential gear case oil. You just want something thick in there. You don't want to use regular engine oil. It's just not thick enough. doesn't have the additives that you'll need. One of the common problems on this machine on the, the differential out here is your, your speedo. Uh, cable runs in here. A lot of times what happens is that starts leaking. Well, then you run your differential low on oil and then you start having some serious problems. That's exactly what happened here. And nine times out of 10, when I get a, a 300 or a 400 Prairie in, they've got oil residue around this housing here. And that's just because that uh, speedometer cable, either the seal wore out or it broke out or, or their, um, it's just leaking oil right there. So you wanna make sure you inspect that when you're changing oil and anytime you're going out for a ride. The rear shock on this machine is adjustable. So you've got several different settings here. It looks like it's gonna be on the, the tightest setting at this point here. If you move it all the way down here, it's gonna be the loosest setting. So if you're putting a, a fertilizer tank on the back or you've got a passenger on the back, you wanna make sure that you tighten up that rear shock, give you a better ride. There's typically a trailer uh, ball that can go on here, uh, but this guy put this enormous hitch on here. So that won't be the case on this one, but that mount is right here. None of this is factory, should not be on here. We've got a solenoid on this side here, uh, behind the left tire, the left rear tire. We've got a couple solenoids there. Uh, so keep that in mind. Going up to the handlebars and under the seat here. All right, to pull this seat, I showed you where that release knob is in the back. We've done that already. It's a bit of a two-hand job. So I've released that seat. All right, so we can just go ahead and pull up on that seat then since we've released that. I'm gonna pull that seat back a little bit. I'm gonna show you underneath this seat so you know how that looks. We've got a latch right here and that's what you release when you pull that knob on the back. And in the front, you actually have a tab right here that sits onto the frame. So that's why you've got to pull that seat back when you're removing it. On the bottom of the seat, you've got a handful of specs here, and I'm gonna give those to you right now. You can pause the uh, video so you know uh, engine oil capacity, uh, valve clearances, just all kinds of different specs there. And then underneath that seat there is your electrical components here. We've got a CDI box here. We've got your starter relay here. We've got your wires that run along your chassis, come through this uh, fender here, and is right here. Your battery would typically sit here. If it was on underneath your seat, you also have your engine uh, intake air filter. It's here, you should have four clips that uh, hold this lid on. Undo those four clips, lift that air filter lid up. Underneath there, you'll have your engine uh, intake air filter. Make sure you clean that, replace that if need be. This one is uh, extremely dirty, but it is a reusable filter. We'll, we'll take some air filter cleaner and clean that filter off real good. And uh, we could potentially reuse that one as long as there's no rips or tears. It is filthy though, so we will need to do that. Up on the handlebars here, on the left-hand side, you've got your lights. You've got off, low, and high beam, and that controls the lights that are Remember we had that one missing up front there. Got your starter button here. Got your on off switch here. That'll kill the engine. Um, if you turn it to the off position, you also wanna make sure that you that it's in the run position. A lot of times what happens is four wheelers won't start. Guys won't realize they shut the four wheeler off using this switch here and they didn't kick it back to the run position. So make sure you check that. Your override button here. There's some confusion on this override button. What this does is allow you to uh, go faster in reverse. So your four-wheeler is limited in reverse unless you hit this button You've got to hold this button the entire time or you're going to be limited Got your speedometer dash here as long as well as an odometer and two indicator lights here neutral reverse When you go to start your four-wheeler that neutral light needs to come on or you're not gonna be able to start your four-wheeler I don't remember on this model if you can pull in the lever here to start it 
Um, obviously, without the battery, without the key, uh, we're, I'm not going to be able to test it for you and tell you exactly for sure. But on a lot of folders, if you pull in your uh, left-hand brake here, which goes to the rear, then you can start your four-wheeler when it's in gear. Again, I don't know if that's the case on this one. Uh, otherwise, you need to make sure that that neutral light comes on. Even if you're in neutral and that neutral light doesn't come on, your four-wheeler is not going to start. So in that case, you either got a bad wire running down to your neutral light or your neutral sensor, or you've got uh, that neutral sensor is bad. So you want to inspect that, make sure that that's in working condition. On your left-hand side here, you should have an auxiliary plug, and this would be for a spotlight, cell phone charger, anything like that. That auxiliary plug is missing on this one, but that should sit there. And then on your right-hand side, you've got your thumb throttle here. You've got a cable adjust here. So you should have a little bit of free play in that thumb throttle. If you don't, you want to make sure you adjust that cable. Otherwise, I can show you the other place to adjust uh, when we go through that carburetor. Like I said before, you've got hydraulic brakes in the front. So this is going to be your front brake uh, lever here and master cylinder. You want to make sure you've got fluid in here. It takes a dot three or a dot four brake fluid to run that. And then that, that brake line goes down and splits right directly uh, near the steering stem uh, down below your fender there. You've got a fuel level gauge. Uh, about 95% of these older four-wheelers, the fuel level gauge is broken or uh, not readable. What happens a lot of times, you can see here, this metal uh, seal is is uh, destroyed or does not working properly. What happens if this four-wheeler sits out in the rain is a lot of times these will leak. You'll get water into your fuel tank. So you want to make sure that this is, uh, even if it's not working, you want to make sure it's sealed up properly the other thing same thing we just talked about water in the fuel tank if you don't have a vent line on here if it's raining you're riding through water stuff like that you'll get water in your fuel your four-wheeler won't run right so make sure you check that uh, and make sure you have a hose running from here what a lot of times what this looks like is you got a hose a vent hose going from here and it'll stick in this hole there right on your dash panel so also they make little little tabs like this it's got a one-way valve on there that'll breathe uh, but won't let fuel come out of there. So there's always that option as well. On this machine here, your spark plug is on the right-hand side of your motor. It's a bit of a challenge to get to on these because you've got your gear shifter there. And then on this side, you've got your uh, inner panel. What I like to do is remove this inner panel. It's a pain just because um, all you're doing is changing your spark plug, but you do want to make sure that that spark plug gets changed. So go ahead and remove that panel. We've got a bolt up here, a couple Phillips down here. You might be able to find somebody that can reach up in there and do that blind to remove that spark plug. But nine times out of 10, you're going to have to go ahead and remove this panel here. We've got Phillips screws down here, Phillips screws here, Phillips screws here, and then a larger bolt here, Phillips screw here. That panel should just pop off of there. It's kind of nice to be able to do that just to inspect your engine make sure you've got no leaks or issues up there you can see it a little bit better if you've got that panel off so i just do that when i'm changing the spark plug that is the overview on the kawasaki prairie 300 if you've got questions or comments make sure and leave those below if this video has been helpful please subscribe like share it with your friends if you'll think if you think it'll be helpful to them uh, also going through and servicing this four-wheeler. If you've got questions on it, make sure you leave those comments below. The oil that I like to use, the oil filters that I like to use, spark plugs, stuff like that. Uh, go ahead and ask those questions if you've got questions on any of that. Thanks for watching.